Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and uh, I mentioned in another video that I wanted to share with you uh, some directly applicable uh, skills. Um, we started teaching the ACX Masterclass this week. It's week number one as I record this video. And at the beginning of the classes that I teach, I offer three little tiny, very powerful pieces of advice about what not to do when you first start a class or a learning process or uh, a skill building process or some sort of um, ongoing situation where you're going to learn something. Um, some people take classes about subjects they know nothing about. Some people take classes about things they know a little bit about, want to know more. Some people take classes to brush up on skills in areas that they know very, very well. And these three things apply no matter what. So the first of the three things not to do is to allow yourself to be distracted. And by that, I mean this little dangerous puppy, right? Put it on silent and do not disturb. Um, try to avoid the whole notion of checking your email as you're learning because you never know when that golden nugget is going to come along right when you're trying to figure out if you've replied to your mom about dad's birthday or who knows what you're doing. It's some, Something happens, a sports score pops up. Who knows? Try not to be distracted. And it's an overt thing, and it's a really easy thing, you know? Hold the buttons down that you need to hold down and slide that little slider across that says, you know, turn me off. And just for the time that you're learning, give your full and undivided attention to the person speaking that's trying to help you out. That's one. The second thing not to do is to say the phrase, oh, I knew that already. Yeah, thank you. Because, yeah, you might know the concept already. You might know everything the speaker is going to say already. But you might not. The speaker might be presenting something to you that, in theory, you understand very well, but they may present a twist to it that gives you that little tiny adjustment that makes it all click or that makes things even better for you or that uh, enlightens you about something that you didn't quite understand before and kind of let go. It's like, I don't really need to know that. I mean, I, I got the gist of it. I, I understand enough of it to be able to take advantage of it, which is great. But what if you could take advantage of it fully by that one little thing that somebody said that you didn't ignore because you didn't say, I knew that already. I knew that already. And the third thing <clears throat> is something that was hard for me to learn because we all make instant judgments about the filtering of information that we get. We get so much information coming at us all day long. We definitely have to put up some guard uh, and some filters, some barriers to uh, adjust to what's important. You know, not everything that's coming at us has the same signal strength. Not everything has the same importance, and we have to kind of figure out what matters, what we can let fly by us, what's purely like nothing to do with me. So that's the thing. Um, try not to say, that doesn't apply to me. Because you may be right, it may not apply to you, but it might in a way that you aren't expecting. So uh, we're teaching people my method of editing. And most people don't know that method already, the stair-step method of editing audiobooks. They don't know that already. And so they don't usually say that part, but they do often say, oh, I already know, I, I, that doesn't apply to me because I use punch and roll. Okay, but if you just let it be open to you for the moment, I mean, look, you're paying to, to be taught, right? Whether it's with money or with your time or with the opportunity cost in sitting at a class and not doing something else that could be fruitful for you. So you're paying in some way, shape, or form. Why not give that moment every opportunity, every ounce of potential that you can? Um, I've had people who are dead set against learning anything other than punch and roll. This is just an example. But when they see how my method works, when they see how the stair-step method works, 
they're like almost embarrassed to say, wow, I was really ready to reject this wholesale. This didn't apply to me because I already knew how to do punch and roll. But boy, am I glad I did. Because, I mean, I, I have some advantages now that I didn't have before. And the other half of that is when you say this doesn't apply to me, that's a defense mechanism to say, I already know what I'm talking about. I already have enough, I have enough knowledge in here. And in my particular case, what you have to offer me is worthless. And it could be any shade of that. But the point is, if you let your mind say, yeah, this doesn't apply to me, then you could be potentially leaving some table stakes on the table. You could be leaving a golden nugget or two lying around that could be useful. Because you can't predict what's going to be useful when you simply open your mind up to the possibilities of what's being presented. Now, is there a chance that, yeah, it doesn't apply to you and you did know that already and you really wouldn't have been distracted all that much by your phone? Yeah, there's a chance. I'm gonna posit that the chance is smaller than you think and the potential upside is larger than you think. I can't tell you the number of times that I've been in uh, a, a training session where I felt that urge to go, okay, I got that, let's move on, let's go. When the instructor has said something that was like, oh, okay, I'm glad I just paid attention. I'm glad I didn't try and figure out what I was gonna have for lunch at that moment, right? So, do these things resonate with you? Do these things make sense to you? Any one of these things, uh, the don't uh, let yourself be distracted, don't say I knew that already, and don't say this doesn't apply to me. Has that ever happened to you when you've been surprised that maybe it did apply to you and you didn't know something already and the distraction was larger than you thought it would be? Um, or um, are you listening to this and going, yeah, you know, David, these these skills that you have, that I knew that already and they don't apply to me. And by the way, I need to check my email. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel and know when these videos are being released, go ahead and click on my head there. And if you don't see my head or my face, uh, go ahead and find a subscribe button somewhere on the page and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to see the latest video I put out, then go ahead and uh, click on that frame there and they will play it for you. Hope you're watching this on VO2Gogo.com. That's where I put them all. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I so appreciate you watching these, and I will talk to you tomorrow.